Let's talk a little bit more about conditional probability. This is an example with athletes and drug testing, and here I'll be able to show you how to use a tree diagram step by step in order to figure out some probabilities that you may be asked for. Here's the situation. We know that in the Olympic Games, we have several athletes who compete, and in 2008, we had 10,000 of them. And we want to make sure that these competitors are competing on an equal playing field and that there are no performance-enhancing drugs available, or at least um, being taken for them to improve their performance over another player. So we do, f they did 5,000 drug tests. All the medal winners are tested, and then others are selected randomly. And so in this second paragraph here, if we suppose that 2% of athletes actually took banned drugs, then we can deliver this drug test. And we have this idea of a false positive, which says that an athlete took drugs when they really didn't. And then this idea of a false negative, where the drug test comes back clean, but the athlete actually took drugs. And so we have some Probabilities given here, 2% of athletes actually take banned drugs, 1% result in a false positive, which means 1% of those who don't take drugs will get a positive test result. And then we have a false negative, 0.5% of those who, too, who do take drugs will get a negative result. So here's the question, you know, how good are these tests? What is the probability that an athlete who tests positive actually took the drugs? So I have our tree diagram set up here already. And what we want to do, we want to start with the idea of the probability that if I picked a random athlete, they have taken drugs. And so what we'll do is we'll branch off from that idea. The condition of this test, false positives, false negatives, is based on whether or not they actually took the drugs. So we're told that 2% actually take drugs. So I'll list this here as 0 0.02. And now we have to think about, well, what percent does not actually take banned substances? And as this is the complement of those who do, yes and no here are complements. That lets me know that these probabilities have to add up to 1. And the same is going to be true in any group of branches from your tree. So the probability that an athlete does not take banned substances or the percentage of those who don't is 98%. In the stem of the problem, I'm told that the probability of a false negative is 0.5%. That means if an athlete actually took banned substances, the test result is going to be negative 0.5% of the time. And so that value changed to a decimal, point, a decimal excuse me, it's 0 0.005, which means that this test is going to accurately predict positive results for those who took drugs. 99.5% of the time. So I'll place 0.995 on this branch of the tree. If we focus now on those athletes who do not take banned substances, then I'll find this idea of a false positive. I was told that 1% of the athletes will have test results that are false positives, which means the test result will come back positive, but these athletes never took drugs. So this is 0 0.01 for 1%, and 99% of the time this test will accurately predict negative results for those who've never taken drugs. And so now the question is, what's the probability that an athlete who tests positive has actually taken drugs? This is a conditional probability. I know the test result. I want to know the probability of taking drugs under that positive test result. So here's what your formula tells you. The probability of actually having taken drugs knowing or given that, that's the vertical line, I have a positive test result. It tells me to take the intersection of yes responses with positive responses and divide it by the positive, the total number of positive responses. Keep in mind again that at its very, very root, probability is number of favorable outcomes over number of total outcomes. Favorable is they got a positive result and they test and they took drugs. Total outcomes, all of those who tested positive. So how do we use the tree diagram to help us find that? Well, 
first we have to know the probability of testing positive and actually taking drugs. Well, what we do is we just read along the branches of the tree that have those. This point zero two, this is the probability of actually taking banned substances. The point nine nine five, this is the probability of a positive test result knowing that I've taken banned substances. If I multiply these two together, then I get the intersection, those who have taken drugs and those who tested positive. So that's how I'll get the numerator. 0 0.02 times 0 0.995. Now for the denominator, the probability of just testing positive, where well, there are two locations in this tree diagram when I have positive test results. I have positive test results when the person has actually taken drugs, and I have positive test results when the person has not taken drugs. Those are my total outcomes. So I need to take a look at that. My denominator will be those who actually took drugs and tested positive or those who did not take drugs and tested positive. So this is how this equation will look. This will lead me to a probability of 0.67, which essentially says that about two-thirds of athletes who test positive actually took drugs. Hopefully this video will help you understand tree diagrams. Certainly if you have questions, feel free to email me or drop me a message.